So as a result, some very, very minor roads got very fancy names. The reality is many of these roads are essentially driveways to three or four houses. And you can find yourself, if you're diving down the driveway and, and there's a tree across the road, you don't find any place to turn around. So the real key to this effort is going to be going through and finding all the streets in, and most of what's going to be set up will be west of, we're going to cover all the streets west of 280. And then if there's more people than that total number, we'll start expanding into the northern portion of the town. But the reality is simply we've never for years now really sent people out to do zone surveys and in particular kept track of how long it takes to do even a simple drive through uh, when nothing's wrong. It could be longer than we think. And if it's shorter than we think, that's great. One of the, I'm going to be giving out to everyone who wants to be part of the exercise. You'll get a notebook containing everything you're seeing tonight, plus details on the zones, details on the types of symbols you see on the zones, a detailed list of all the streets focused each for each zone that's in your group. And then also this unit log. This is a standardized procedure program out of uh, ICS, Incident Command System. What it comes down to surprised me how monetarily important it is that volunteer time be recorded during emergencies. And so this is practice more than anything else. But I learned that reimbursement from FEMA can be as much as 50% higher, depending on how many volunteer hours can be documented. And this unit log is that documentation. So I, I put this in here for you to practice with, to become familiar with, or at least know about, and the situations that we may really need to be responding during emergencies, might as well practice now. Uh, the, the primary purpose of this exercise is, well, it's more than one thing, but the primary one, there are a surprising number of roads labeled private and no trespassing. The town's policy is that until they get authorization from the people who live on those streets, we are not to go onto those streets. But it would still be worthwhile knowing from the, the public road what you can determine about the characteristics and the, um, the character of those streets. But the, I think the real message is in the latter part of this, this uh, in that you need to keep in mind that you might find a power line or a tree across the, any of the roads we drive. And if you're driving El Monte or Summerhill Avenue or Magdalena, it's not too much of a problem. But if you're over on Roost Ridge Road or some of the other roads, you're going to have to back up if you don't find a driveway. And some of those roads, I went on Roost Ridge, it's a quarter of a mile before you find a driveway. So if a tree's down or a power line's down, I hope you're practicing your ability to back up. Or we need to at least keep that as part of the uh, issues that might be true uh, on any of these roads. So I put together this as a suggestion. And if you think of better ones, part of this process is to review what I've put together as a package and if you see parts of it that you think could be done differently, better, or you think should be taken out, I want you to make notes. Uh, this is, I want this document to be so that if someone who wants to help but has never been in Los Altos Hills can actually not become part of the problem. Uh, if they try to turn around on, a, on some of the roads I've walked, uh, they become part of the problem because they are 
their front or rear wheels are going to be off the road. So private, no trespassing. The street sign is important because if it's there or not, it's going to help enormously if you're trying to find a street using the zone maps that you'll see in a moment. Wide enough for normal two-way traffic, or is it one lane? Uh, whoops, come on. <laughs> it helps to not use your finger to point with. Uh, if it's one lane road, then it really becomes a question of if you can turn around on the road or are there frequent driveways? And driveways will get you out of trouble, but only if they're there. And of course, the street not on the map is another factor. The maps are 10 years old and there may be new streets that we don't know anything about yet. The notebook is going to start with this map. And what this is, the, a photograph of the town map, the one that we hand out as part of our CERT activities. And what I've done is circled the general area of this town map that corresponds to the zone group, in this case, West 1, and the three zones that are made up this West One. The key to this process is that Neil uh, Caton put together a, a package that said, let's take, if we're going to send people to the north portion of town, let's send them out to do uh, more than one zone at a time, because it would make no sense to go out, do one zone, come back, and then go out again. There are 58 of these zones, and so this is now boiled down to 16 zone groups. And the notebooks I've been making, each will have a map as on the front cover of the notebook of the general area where the zone group that you will be assigned if you take this particular book. The next section, this is how, this is the outlines of all the zones in this portion of town and uh, the, I didn't have a picture tonight, but the notebook has the zones that would be looked at would be highlighted with a color outline of the zone section. So that you first know what general part of town, now you get a better handle on what the specific tasks are. And then, oh, here's one. I, I didn't remember I had this in there. Um, the point is, the, you can have this outline give you a feeling of where and how far you'd have to be looking. This is an actual zone map of the one of the zones in that group. And here are these various road markings, is Page Mill Road, uh, Central Road. What's interesting about this map, let's see if I can see a portion that I don't see yet. Yeah, uh, we walked this the other day and you get out to here and there is a barrier across the road and all of this road is, uh, unpa is paved but completely unused except by the fire department. We wouldn't know this looking at this particular zone map, but if indeed uh, you did have driven, if you had driven this and documented that, that would be useful, if nothing else, to tell us, hey, we don't have to deal with that section, even though it is not obvious on the map. That's the kind of information that I hope we can document. I've created a listing of all the streets that correspond to any given um, zone map, so that you would now be able to and to, for this exercise, you would be putting in things like private road or no turnaround and other things of that sort. But I would also suggest that this could be used if we have an infrastructure, if there's a real incident, this could be used to write down street numbers and incident report numbers and things of that sort. I welcome any additional thoughts on that part. So, that brings us, I think, to the end of what I was going to say. 
and informal sense. But what I really wanted to do now was to first open it up to questions and then expand it to what else we might have wanted to be either asking about these roads or other information we think we might really wish to get. Are there any comments at this point? Let me uh, unshare my screen so we can. Okay, anyone have any thoughts at this point or have I put you all to sleep? I could do that, I'm good at that. Um, okay, well then I'll add one other piece of information. Um, Part of this is to make sure that the people that we are driving by don't start calling the sheriff if, they don't, if we don't look like what they think they could have on their street. And so um, Victoria sent to me a set of signs, which I think uh, I'll hold up an example and see if you can properly see it. This one, for example, uh, could go on, since it's in vertical format, I would be tempted to place it on the passenger, on the rear passenger uh, windows on the left and right side. And then this is actually set up so that you could be put on the front and rear windows. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a challenge. When I was, when my wife and I did a zone survey in our neighborhood some years ago, and I stopped the car to write down the street number of a house we were looking at, the owner came rushing out. Oh, what's wrong? How come you're here? And I, of course, was nicely decorated in my uh, certain outfit and explained what we're doing. And as soon as he understood what we were doing, he was quite comfortable. But until then, he was, hey, what are you here for? And then we had another of our, one of our teams at the, uh, the uh, Port Claire, I think it was, when they drove into there, the uh, site manager came out, was very um, concerned about the presence of these unusually unusual people until it was commented, we're doing a survey for the, oh, you're doing a survey for the fire department. Well, how can we help you? I want us to be able to make sure that the people that see us coming through the neighborhood have that, oh, how can we help you attitude? And if nothing else, if they do start talking to you, tell them all about CERT. Maybe we can get them interested. So um, that's, what's coming. Uh, the note, I've got five notebooks completed and I'm working madly on the others. Uh, if my recommendation is that you pick, if you're going to want to be part of the exercise, that you come by our place and pick up a notebook. That way you get a chance to become familiar with it uh, before you end up having to to make it work. And I think in this case, I'd rather do it that way than drop it in your lap the morning, the afternoon of the actual drive through, because this is, I'm trying to use it to do two things at once. One, to make this notebook as useful as possible. Two, to document the troubled streets in town. And I guess the third item to get you familiarized both with how we will be doing this sort of survey and where all these little streets are. So anyway, that those notebooks are here. I'm already ready for five people to come pick them up. By tomorrow noon, I should have another four or five. And um, Victoria, how many people at this point did you say we had listed? Um, on the doodle, there was 11. Okay. All right. Well, I will then be preparing more notebooks. 
And if more of you um, want to join, we've set the 21st. You probably saw my email. Um, that's going to be our day 21st from 1 to 4. Um, so if you guys want to join in, just let us know. But uh, do you have like a cutoff day, Larry, that you prefer people to let us know if they want to join in? I'm not worried too much. I, I, it may become less and less formalized notebooks uh, as they get closer. But, well, that's a good question, actually, because Neil was asking if there's an online version of the notebooks. Uh, not yet. And that's, in fact, a very worthwhile thing. I just haven't had a chance to, um, well, I was still developing it at this point. Uh, I'm still listing uh, streets for the 50, for the, uh, presently I've done about half, maybe 25 zones where I'm alphabetically listing streets on a, on a form. I'm doing that because I, I wanted to use that approach to both uh, categorize or at least make sure everyone knows what streets are in the zone and a place for them to write the notes smoothly and you know, logically. But it's still a matter of finding all them and, and typing them up, which I'm presently doing. But no, I don't see any problem. Uh, I may end up if it, if they were to say, "Hey, on uh, say uh, Saturday afternoon, they'd like to play." I'll give them the maps and let them make out the lists. So no, I don't see any problem. I can certainly put together uh, once I get past the notebooks I have. I would certainly uh, focus on having it available online to the extent we can. So do you think that we could possibly have um, an online version if someone doesn't need as are you Neil, are you asking because you don't really have time to go pick it up and you just want to print it out yourself? Well, I have, as I say, I've got, uh, well, more specifically, the CERT uh, has, the recon has 10 notebooks which presently have in them, for instance, the seven infrastructure route surveys. And so I've been using those notebooks to contain this set of Saturday or Sunday, <laughs> better be Sunday, uh, drives. Uh, mostly because it was convenient way of keeping track and keeping a record of it. Uh, I would probably suggest that I finish those up since I'm two thirds of the way through those. But there's a there, the real point here, and if anyone wants to help, it's a big factor, uh, is that I'm only will have done at most 10 out of the 16 uh, zone groups. And so if anyone would like to I can give them the boilerplate part and have them start, you know, listing the uh, the streets and doing the other pieces of the puzzle that I put together. So the answer is twofold. I can send out a sample, but I won't. It, it each one of these depends on uh, a different set of maps and a different set of street lists. So I'm not sure exactly how I would do a generic uh, online version of it. it. It may have too many details uh, specific to each uh, individual zone group. Neil, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I was mostly thinking you're a much more patient person than I am. And so I, I shudder at the idea of making 15 copies of something and then having to do it each drill. So I was hoping to find a more, you know, distributed, able, cranked out each time path. Yeah. Well, I, this was sort of a, my approach this time was once and for all. I didn't think 
that we would make that much of, you know, we could then use this as a template for any of our other activities that we wanted to, to do. But uh, I'm welcome suggestions and probably the simplest <clears throat> one is to put what I have done for one of the zone groups on the web and, or at least email it and the people try it out on other zone groups. Larry, are you are you generating the street names by looking at the map? Because yes. we have Excel spreadsheets with addresses and zones in them, and I can certainly send you that. Okay, and, I, and what I was doing was twofold. I was wanting to find out if it was practical to read all the zones, all these streets on the maps. And uh, yeah, I'm willing to have you send me that, but it was mostly I didn't have anything else I could use at the time. Okay, I'll send that to you right now. And if you okay. use it, fine. And if you don't, that's okay too. Yeah, okay. Well, that's useful. And I think that would be one of the things that I would propose we that would save some effort. It's maybe a lot of effort. The reality is that it wasn't that long to for me to take the uh, the street names off the street. It was more typing them up into something that could then be easily used. Okay. Well, this is already typed up in a spreadsheet. Okay. I'll you take cut that. and paste out of it, if nothing else. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from anyone that uh, good, bad, or indifferent? Okay. Um, Victoria, do you have anything else, or I have one more topic if I, if you like. Um, just a reminder that when we do this, um, and we should probably put it in the notebook, uh, just and I can I can type it up, no problem. Um, be sure you're wearing your vest. These are Marsha asks, um, wearing your vest um, that you have your cert ID with you. Mm -hmm. um, also, the the ask of Marsha was the first sign that Larry held up the volunteer, the city, the, um, what is it called? Volunteer, I always get the name wrong. Um, disaster volunteer, whatever she has on the back of volunteer our Volunteer emergency much. services. Thank you, that's what we end up doing. Volunteer emergency services. Dave knows that well. Um, Unfortunately. <laughs> and then uh, we have the other cert one as well. So um, those are kind of Marsha's asks. Um, I just sent her an email telling uh, her the time um, and the day and that we would be doing the, the following things that she required. Um, and they asked to have her let the SO know that we're going to be out and about doing doing some things. So um, hopefully she is able to do that so we don't have any issues. Um, but, you know, should you have a be pulled over for some reason, then, um, you know, obviously you'll have all your your gear on and your ID and hopefully um, we'll be able to mitigate that kind of stuff quickly. Um, as far as pickup goes, um, Larry, do you want to, I, I think it might be, what, what do you guys think? Is it easier to just set a time to go pick up and just pick up your stuff from Larry or what's easier? I find setting time is easier. It might be easier for you too, Larry, to say, okay, you know, I'll have everything ready by this date. Um, I don't know. What's, what's easier for your time and everybody else for planning? <laughs> Uh, what I would suggest, my present thinking at least, is that we're here almost all the time, but there's no guarantee. So what I would be tempted to suggest is that you send a text message saying, hey, we'd like, I'd like to come by and pick up the notebook, and I just reply by text. Yeah, come on over or set a time because I may be uh, not available. Uh, also, I just saw a chat question about my address. I'm going to send out a, a, my, my phone number and my street address once we finish tonight. And um, I'm like I say, I, my view is that since it's probably easier just to have you decide when you can come and text and find out if we're available, then we spend then trying to really 
push your time and date. Does that work for people? If you don't have text capability, you can always call me for that matter. That sounds to me fine. Okay. Yeah, how could that not work? <laughs> well, <laughs> I was trying for that, but you never know. I, I just want to reiterate uh, Neil's point that you're way too uh, accommodating. <laughs> well, it's, 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 I was sitting here saying, how come I let myself get into this? But it is, it's, it's worthwhile and so far it's worked. But I certainly like the idea of expanding the, the tasks because there are some, uh, some more zones that will need to be documented. Uh, anyway, um, the next item on my list was to talk with people. Oh, hang on a second. Uh, I'm being addressed. Eduardo, okay, I will answer you after we get off the net. Uh, and that's the point I, I wanted to bring up. Uh, so far, what we've been talking about has been without ham radio. And I think we need to also spend some time focusing ourselves on reacquainting ourselves with ham radio in our environment. And so I wanted to suggest that we could try, I've been in my you know spare time sitting here thinking, you know, we could do ham radio uh, table topping on Zoom. Uh, the last time I brought the topic up, we tried having everyone try to call me at once. And it turned out I only heard the first person that placed the call. Then I realized after we had been done that that's fine. As long as I get one name out of the crowd, I will keep calling for people until I have all the names of whoever is trying to reach me same way I would do in ham radio over the year. So I'd like to, uh, certainly this isn't going to occur immediately, but I'd like to put it on the table for discussion to see if people would like to try that. Is there any strong feeling either way from anyone? Okay. Sorry, Larry, I wanted to be clear. You said one way or the other, meaning with or without a tabletop exercise? Um, I wasn't sure what your A and no, B choices were. That, that's what I'm asking. I'm trying to remember what they were. <laughs> You're proposing a Zoom tabletop exercise, what in lieu of an actual ham radio exercise? Is, is that I, okay, it was in fact, the idea I was working from was that we have a variety of people, those who have ham radios, those who are listening, but not yet having a ham radio or license. And so I thought we could do it both ways. Uh, by doing a Zoom meeting, everyone can play. Uh, and then the other part I was thinking of was doing a ham radio net from home, which would then move to your vehicles. So we would set up a starting point of everyone on the radio from home, verifying that we can do that. And then have everyone who has a ham radio license move to their vehicle and let's go through the same process. And the final item on that particular test is to try it simplex. If the repeater is out of service, I think it would be of real value for us to go through the, the laborious effort of relaying the uh, information from one ham to the next until it reaches net control or uh, what we choose to have. Probably for that exercise, someone at the either the arc area which we can't do because of the parking lot or the EOC, but actually go through uh, a realistic exercise of 
having the repeater fail. And so anyway, those are the things that are on my list of things. Oh, there's one other. And <laughs> I've often been, it's often been pointed out, I like to chat with people. And so I'm going to suggest that we have an evening of ham radio uh, conversations. Now, I'm not much of a uh, one who likes to get on the air and just simply talk about generalities. But I think it would be of real interest to start talking about aspects of ham radio that we might want to be exploring and or uh, working out ways for us to have our non ham certain people who have ham radios. Uh, maybe we should be doing having them text into uh, us and we start working on ways to in, to um, mesh ham radio communications with those who are texting to us at the same time. So those are things that are on in my list of, hey, wouldn't it be fun to do? Uh, I welcome any suggestions or comments. Mira actually had a comment. She said, can we try using ham radio during this drive around exercise for those that have a license? I thought it through and decided that we probably would not want to add that to it. There's a, it's, it, folk, it requires a different kind of operation. And I honestly felt to some extent I didn't, I, we are already tiptoeing around the edge of a formal exercise. And I'm concerned that we don't get into a situation where we create um, in name, in, in everything but name, a uh, formal activation. And so I would rather not add ham radio to this particular exercise mostly because it, I think we're going to be busy enough trying to record all this information as we go from street to street. And well, I just simply wouldn't want to overload the system. Having said all that, I can, if people are interested, act as net control and or simply monitor anyone who wants to be checking in and going through reports by uh, ham radio. So let's turn the tables around a little bit and ask uh, if there are a significant number who would like to do that. I'm planning to be here as sort of supervisor. I was expecting, I was going to offer that if you have any questions when you're on the road, you can text or email me, but hey, I can always monitor the ham radio and that be that that be another route. So I'm game if other people want to do it. How about let's see a show of hands of who wants to do the ham uh, portion of it. All right. Looks yeah. like that's my, enough. My yeah, there we go. Not necessarily have it be terribly structured, but if Larry, if it's easy for you to be monitoring uh, ham radio while you're monitoring texting, any of us who at any point feel like just a quick check in message anywhere along the way, uh, it could be helpful. Yeah, I think that, I, you know, I was sitting here as soon as I said no, I thought, hey, no, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't turn something down too quickly. Uh, yeah, I think that that would be fine with me. And it also offers something I was thinking about which was from some of the more isolated locations, it might very well be worthwhile having a radio check and have you check your cell phone at the same time to see if indeed you were able to reach out from where you happen to be. Uh, if you're on top of the mountain, I don't feel too worried, but I was surprised at some of the seemingly top of the mountain areas where the, my cell phone no longer was working. And so we might do both. I, I'd be, 
I'll curl up in my chair with my radio in one hand and my cell phone in the other. But yeah, why not try it? There's certainly, I think it's any opportunity to use our ham radios in, in, in a, uh, what I think of a, a professional mode is is fine. So I'll be I'll be available and welcome anyone who wants to do it. Okay. Okay, that's a good plan. I think that's a I like a very good use of our time out there. And um, I think um, you know a lot of people uh, in their feedback wanted to to do some more ham radio stuff. Um, so I think that would kind of come in line with some of the thoughts of the group in general. Um, yeah, yeah and yeah, and I think on that note too, um, you know, I think moving over to maybe one of the training sessions during the month to be ham, um, maybe next month we can focus on that part, doing what you're suggesting, doing a Zoom, doing the car, um, yeah. and those those things we can schedule those, um, you know, as a kind of a next step. Um, after the recon, because I know it's something that the ECC would might want to be um, involved in too. Um, I know that's something that Drew and I have talked about as well. So um, I think that would be a good kind of next next yeah. phase, if you will, um, for for the recon group. What do you guys think? A good idea. Yeah, I think the more activity we can do, the better. I know we're all getting kind of COVID burnout and. Um, <laughs> We got to get our brains moving along, and I know a lot of people have, have really asked to to do some of these things uh, with you, Larry. So I think that would be perfect. Bridget, did you have a question? I see your hand up, or was that a clap? Is that a clap? It's a clap. It's I a agree. clap. Next Yay. one. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Awesome. Okay, I'm good. I see lots of clapping. All that. right. Here. I've got one more point I would make before oh. we get too far, and that is that. I'm going to ask if you do use your ham radio that you make sure your vehicle is stopped at the side of the road. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One of them is that there is open question among the various uh, police departments and agencies about using handheld uh, equipment like a telephone while you're driving. Now, it has been argued strongly and I think accepted in most places that in an emergency environment, ham radio operators are allowed to do communications of emergency mode while driving. But we're not in that situation here. And so I would certainly not want you to be in the circumstance I was at. I was down at Moffett Field. I worked there for the Army for 30 years. And I was setting up as part of a ham radio test for an open house at Buffett Field, driving around the field, checking capability, contact capability, when all of a sudden a siren went off behind me. And it was the um, security officer pulled me over and said, you know, you haven't been stopping at the stop signs. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oops. <laughs> And explain to them that well, I I thought I was doing it, but I was also in the process of doing this test for the for the Office of Emergency Services. He let me go, but it taught me a lesson at the same time. Pay attention and park your car when you talk on the radio, unless if you're on the freeway. I can see how you would still talk, but the real point I'm trying to make is that. If you're going to use the ham radio during this event, use it when you're parked and remember to park to write down the information about the streets that you've driven. Don't try to write while you drive down the next street. They're too narrow. So. Good no point, sorry. Larry. And the texting too, that goes without saying, um, obviously, right? Um, great. Um, Anything else that I think so we're clear. So we've got uh, Larry's going to make more books. Eventually, we're going to hopefully get that online, but we can talk about that later. Let's not have Larry's head spin around because he's been working hard at 
getting these notebooks together. So we don't want to add more onto his plate, but um, I can assist you with that, Larry, if we need to. We're going to look at doing that, which I think is, is good for future stuff. Um, and then you're all going to uh, shoot Larry a text or a phone call to let him know that you're going to go pick up your book. Um, we're hoping prior to, so you can kind of uh, give him some feedback, right, um, on what you think, um, you know, if you're not understanding something or, uh, or anything like that. He, he is really looking for feedback for a lot of these things that he's been doing. Um, and then you are going to have your, I'll do a little uh, blurb, Larry, for the notebooks. Uh, let's see, where are we on? I can probably bring it by on Friday. And then the extra signs. Um, so the signs will be in there the um, what we're going to use for identifiers. Um, I'll do that for you too, Larry. And then um, anything else I'm missing? Okay. Wrap up? Uh, not really. I guess one of the points I would make is that I have found that the blue tape it works well on glass. It's not uh, people have been concerned about using it on the painted portions of their cars. But I would suggest that uh, Marcia has already asked us to put the, at least the cert sign, the horizontal one on the front and back windows. And then we can put the, and I'll have to look up the title myself. Uh, we could put this one onto the side windows uh, using tape on the glass is be, would be my suggestion. But if you don't have that tape, then I, well, figure out something. I, I'll leave it in the capable hands of this crowd. Um, awesome. Anyone else have any questions or anything to add? I just want to again say thank you to Larry. I, don't, I mean, this is just hours and hours of work and I really um, can't thank you enough for, for getting us out there and doing something um, that's going to help our group um, in the long run. So again, thank you. Um, I did put the form to, to check in for tonight to um, in the chat. So if you guys get a chance, if you could check in. And um, other than that, uh, looks like we'll, what I'm ahead. going to do, I just realized I, I can send Rather than try to send it all out, I can put it in the in the system now. Um, my street address and my phone number. Yes, that would be great. And all um, I'm recording this, so when I am done, I think there's a portion that you can look at the chat. Um, but if not, you guys can always email uh, me or Larry, and we can get that information for you too. So Larry's phone number. You can type, right? John, I just resent the format. If you scroll up a little bit, do you see it? Okay, so there's my phone, there's my address and my phone number. Is a carriage return. Woohoo! All right. So, um, Summer Hill Avenue, for anybody who is curious, our house is uh, directly across from the corral and uh, it's got a circular driveway. So, we'll uh, have our cars out of the way. You can pull in the driveway and then drive out again when you come. Perfect. So. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you got something out of the Semidian talk. I found it very interesting, um, a good update um, for, for all of us uh, to see kind of where we're at in the, in the county. Um, you know, nothing, nothing new in terms of us not having enough vaccines to go around, but, um, you know, hopefully um, that will change, but that was a um, really good. Uh, thank you guys. Hope you guys have a chance to go and check it out. All right. Well, that's, I think it. Thanks guys for everything. Have a good uh, rest of your uh, week, I guess. I won't be seeing you. We don't have any more, I don't think any more things going on, right? Oh no, wait, we have, no, no. I think today today's our light week, so. 
All right. See you guys all later. Have a good uh, rest Thank of your you. week. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Bye. If it lets me to submit another. <laughs>